Hi, welcome to module, lecture two, module 2 of lecture 10. It's possible to the last module you felt kind of unsatisfied. After all, introduce vectors as just a collection of scalars. So this was some vector x1, x2, x3, x4. There's a column vector. Surely all as to vector is not some like collection of individual um, scalars. Turns out you can view vectors just like this just fine and get through all the stuff involving vector manipulation without ever going deeper. However, for some people it's a lot more clear to view vectors as something physical. And there we have a graphical interpretation of vectors. Let's start with a two-dimensional vector um, consisting of x1 and x2. Well, you can view the x1 component element as the distance along the first axis, the x1 or x-axis. And you can view the x2 as the distance along the second axis, the, the second x2 axis, or in some cases, the y-axis. Now what's the vector then? The vector is the directed line segment taking you from 0, 0, yeah, that's pretty straight, 0, 0 to that point x1, x2. That is the vector x1, x2. So this thing here, if I call this thing x, would be the vector x. And it helps sometimes to draw out your vectors graphically to understand better what the different operations you can do on the vectors mean. Okay. So sometimes it's a better way to look at it. Now the problem with looking at it this way is for two dimensions, it's not so hard to visualize. For three dimensions, they're trickier because the vector has to come out of the page potentially or into the page. And for four dimensions, you're pretty much out of luck. So viewing it as a, as a sort of abstract concept of a collection of scalars is often a lot more helpful when you're dealing with a large set of, set of a, large, a large dimension vector. As you might have, for instance, when you have a data set um, with many, many data points, it's very difficult to visualize a thousand dimensional space even though it can be helpful sometimes, and you can do a lot of stats geometrically by using these vectors of data points as actual spatial vectors in some thousand dimensional space. We, however, are not gonna do that here. And I, at the time of recording this, most, most um, presentations in political science of stats don't tend to employ that approach in general. But it's still helpful to understand how to manipulate vectors using this graphical approach. So let's start there. Let's start with the simplest type of operation, addition, or subtraction for that matter. It doesn't make a difference. Let's see how to add two vectors, a plus b. Now let's use real numbers here. So let's call a the vector, uh, making this up as I go along, one, two, not the subject, just the vectors. And let's call b. Let's see, 2, 1. And let's say we wanted to add those two things. Well, um, first let's look at it component-wise. It turns out the way you add vectors is to add each corresponding component. So a plus b is going to be 1 plus 2 in the first spot, and 2 plus 1 in the second spot equals 3, 3. That is literally all there is to it. <laughs> You add each corresponding component, and the summed vector is the vector corresponding to each individual matching component summed. You cannot add vectors that have different dimensions, that have different numbers of components, because you left off, you had something left off, right? So if I had, if A were like this instead, what would 3 add to? Nothing. So I can't, I couldn't add this to this. I could only add this to this or equivalently two row vectors with the exact same number of elements. I must have the same dimensional vectors when I'm adding them, otherwise I have leftover elements that don't add to anything and I can't do it. It's not defined. But if it is defined, if it's the same number of elements in each one, it's relatively straightforward. All you have to do is add each corresponding component. And that's all there is to it. Subtraction is similar. If I had a minus b, I would subtract the second from the first. So this would be 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 1, which would equal negative 1 and 1. And negative numbers can also be in vectors. Um, and we'll see how that works better in a second. Now graphically, how would this work? Well, first let's draw A. Now A is 1 
2. So that's 1 over, let's call this 1, and 2, and 3. And I'll try to be vaguely consistent because it's a little easier to understand if I actually can draw a graph correctly um, on the screen. So 1, 2 means I go to 1, and I go up here to 2, and here is my first vector. Now how would I add another one to it? Well, it turns out if I, I could just add it by taking, by going across one, by across two and up one from this one. So if I draw the next vector from the head, this is called the head of the vector. This is the tail down here, oh, a different color. The tail is down here in blue, and the head of the vector is up here in red. And if I draw the second vector that I'm adding from the head of the first, like so, um, this way, so I go I go two over here, so that's two over goes two to three, and then one up goes from two to three, so I'm up here now. So if I draw the second vector over here, and again I can draw the colors, so the tail's over here, so head to tail. And here's the head of this one. So if I add, I can add two vectors by taking the first vector, and put the second vector tail to head over there. I put the tail of the second vector on the head of the first vector. Then the summed vector is the vector that connects the tail of the first one to the head of the second one, which you can see in this case is 3, 3, or it should be if I drew that better. So this is how you would add vectors graphically. Now, I hope it seems clear to me, at least I'm drawing this tablet, that it's a lot easier to add them by components. Um, just numerically than having to actually draw these pictures out. But it helps conceptually a little bit to understand the pictures. Why is that the case? Well, we can look at this picture right here. Um, we've drawn. You basically follow the path of all the vectors, right? So first you're going up. And I'm hoping I'm going the right direction because I'm drawing this backwards in front of my face. <laughs> um, I guess it's like this. Anyway, I'm not trying to do this properly for you to see this. This way. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so you go up and then over, or up and over, depending on how you look at this thing. Um, and then you follow the path of the first vector, and then the second vector tells you to move this way. You keep moving, that's the sum of the two vectors, and then you go this way. It might help to think of these vectors as displacements. So the first vector displaces you two, two up and one across. The second vector displaces you two across and one up. And the net displacement is three across and three up. And that's typically how vectors are used in physics, for instance, as displacements to start off with. Um, that's the first use of them. So there's one way of looking at sums. Um, to, let's deal with differences in a second because it'll be easier to understand when we deal with scalar multiplication. So let's move to that. Um, multiplication is trickier because there's different kinds of multiplication. First, we're going to deal with scalar multiplication, which involves taking a scalar C times a vector A. So let's take a again to be 1, 2. Let's take the scalar to be 4. Well, again, it's fairly easy to multiply a scalar times a vector. All you do is multiply the scalar times every component of the vector. So in this case, it's 4 times 1. It's a times. And the second case, it's 4 times 2. Or the vector 4 and 8. All you have to do for multiplying by a scalar is multiply every element of the vector times the scalar. If you had a negative number, this should be db, I guess. Then you multiply negative 3 times 2 and negative 3 times 1, which gives you negative 6, negative 3. That's all you have to do. So putting this together um, more gener generically, if you want to add x and y, assuming they have the same dimensions, you would have the vector, um, well, actually, let me get to that in a second. Um, that vector would be the sum of each individual components. I'll get back to this when we talk a little more about components. Um, so, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. <laughs> so, if this is the summed vector x plus y, so if x plus y equals z, then the first component of x plus y is the first component of z, equals the sum of the first component of x and the first component of y. That's how you add vectors, component by component. 
Similarly, if you wanted to multiply um, by a, a, some scalar, then if um, if some scalar c times the vector a equals the new vector um, e, then I should just make that a g for this case. Then g one would equal c times a one, and in general g i would equal c times a i, and in general z um, i would be x i plus y i. Well, all these i's tell you which element of the vector you have. And that's all there is to scalar multiplication and all there is to vector multiplication. Um, if you want to do this graphically, all you need to know is that when you multiply by a scalar, you shrink, by a positive scalar, you shrink or expand the length of the vector. So if I had um, the vector, so this is one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna do a two here, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And if I wanna multiply the vector one, two, which was over here, by two, say, then I would multiply each element by two. So the one would get multiplied by two, so now I'll be over here, I'll make a blue line, and the two would be multiplied by two, so the second element would now be four. So we go to here, and that should exactly cover this, but just be longer. So multiply by two doubles the length of the vector. We'll get to length in a second. Um, similarly, if I wanted to shrink it, say, by two, so multiply by a half, I would, the one would go to a half, the two would go to one, and I'd have this vector. Note in all these cases that they stay on the same direction. Whereas when I added two vectors, because this, I was adding displacements, I ended up in a different direction, just as if you turn right, then you went forward, then turn right, you would end up diagonally, right? A different direction than either case. Um, when I'm multiplying, I'm stretching the vector or, or compressing it, that stays in the exact same direction. The only exception is by multiplying by a negative number, which flips the direction. So if I have a negative number, and I should have, if I multiply by negative one half, then, I can't use it right again, then I get this blue one down here, that's a red one again, but you get the point, which is negative one half, negative one, which is exactly mirrored across the y, the, um, well, both axes in this case, um, from the previous one. So you take the, whatever direction was pointing before and flip it, right? You flip it across the axes. And that is if multiplied by a negative number. That's helpful for subtracting numbers. If I took a minus b, right? We already said that would be uh, negative one one. Well, how do you deal with that? Well, a minus b is the same as a plus negative b, and a plus negative b is a plus negative one times b. So first, and I should have left my room, but first um, I would take a, which again is one, two, that's over here. I really need a negative area over here. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, that's okay, I'm over here now, there's no problem. Okay, there's negative one, positive one. And two and one, there you go. So that's a, now negative b, well b is um, negative one, Sorry, negative b is negative one times b. b was two one. Negative one times two one is negative two, negative one, right? So negative b equals negative two, negative one. Now I can at, start that at the head of the first one and add it. So let's do that. So negative two goes um, to the left two. So it goes from one to zero to negative one. So I go over here, and negative one goes down one. So I go from here all the way down to here. The tail of the first one is the connects to the head of sorry the tail of the second one connects to the head of the first one, and now the actual summed vector is this red one over here, which is negative one, which is negative one one, which is what we want. So again, um, a is this white vector over here, one, two. 
then negative b is the negative is negative one times b, which is negative two negative one. So that goes down, that goes to the left two and down one. And then the sum of negative b and a is that red vector negative one one, which is the same as you get for subtracting. So should you want to do this graphically, you can do this by taking the by flipping the um, subtracted vector and attaching it again, attaching its tail to the head of the first vector to subtract two vectors. Um, and again, it's probably obvious from my doing this that A, this is not a common thing I do <laughs> since it was taking a little longer than it should have, and B, um, it's often a lot, lot simpler to deal with the abstract vectors as expressed in their components according to this notation in which you have a parentheses around the whole vector. Much easier usually. <laughs> So, but that is a way you can do this graphically, and more importantly, it gives you a sense of the intuition behind vectors. A vector can be thought of as a displacement. Summing them sums displacements, just as if you turn straight, went straight, and turned to my left. Um, then you get the, the sum displacement goes diagonally. Um, if you were to go, if you were to sort of backtrack, which is like a negative, right? If you went forward, then this way, and then went backward, negative one, negative one. You go, you retrace all your steps and end up at the zero again. All right, so you, this plus this minus this takes you back to the beginning. So the sum of this plus this plus negative one, one, which is negative one, negative one, takes you back to the beginning. All right, so one plus, so this would be um, zero, one plus, well, in this case, it's one zero. I'm trying to flip it for your sake. Anyway, <laughs> if I go this way and this way, I get a net vector over here. If I so if I add the negative of this vector, I get back to the beginning, back to zero. We actually have a name for that. It's the zero vector. We write it like this. And the zero vector is what you get when you take a and subtract a, <laughs> which kind of makes sense, right? This would be a1, a2, a3, and so on, minus a1, a2, a3, and so on, gives 0, 0, 0, which is the zero vector. The zero vector is a vector consisting only of zeros. Go figure. Um, the zero vector is used reasonably commonly. The, the one vector consisting only of ones is used less, com used less commonly. Um, but that covers it. So that's addition and subtraction. And again, scalar multiplication involves stretching, um, compressing, or flipping your vectors. Um, that's the intuition behind these things. Um, so that's most of the stuff. Um, two more things we've talked about, though, that are a little more complex. One is the length of a vector. The length is different from the dimension of a vector. The dimension of a vector is the number of components in the vector. It's a counting, it's an integer. You count the number of components, the number of elements in the vector. The length of the vector, in contrast, relates directly to the graphic representation of this. So for instance, if I have my old standby A again, it looks like that. I think I get better drawing this. <laughs> um, if that's my A, the length of A is the length of that line segment, of that, well, that arrow, exactly in the way you've done, you did it back in geometry back in high school or before that or whatever, um, you calculate the length in the exact same way. We call this length a norm. This is called a norm of A. Turns out there are many, many, many norms in math. Um, we will be dealing with largely one conventional norm, which is the length you're used to seeing. <laughs> That's the norm. There's a double bar there to distinguish it from the absolute value, which is a single set of bars. This is a double set of bars a double set of vertical lines. Um, so this is the norm, and the norm is the square root of the sum of the squares of each of the components. In this case, it's this. Um, if you had more than one, this would go on indefinitely until the nth component. That's the norm in general, the norm of this variable, the norm of the vector uh, 1, 2 equals the square root, 1 squared plus 2 squared, which equals the square root of 5. So that's the length of this vector. Um, and that's all there is to length, honestly. That's the length. Um, if a vector is normalized, 
it is divided by its norm. So the normalized version of 1, 2 would be 1 over the square root of 5 times uh, 1, 2, or the vector 1 over the square root of 5, 2 over the square root of 5. Why do we do that? We do that so the length of a normalized vector is 1, which is the definition of a normalized vector. Now this actually covers most of what you need to know for um, operations on vectors. The one thing we didn't deal with was vector multiplication. Now it turns out there are many ways to do vector multiplication, and because of that it's going to earn its own module next. But really you've covered almost all of it now, addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, lengths, um, let's talk about norms related to lengths, and you can figure out the, um, for instance, the length of a summed vector, of the sum of two vectors, right? So if you had, um, uh, sort of backwards here, a plus b, then you'd have, because each individual component of a plus b is this, the first component of a plus this first component of b, you'd have a1 plus b1 squared plus a2 plus b2 squared, etc. Um, that's the length. This just comes up more often for subtraction for differences of two vectors. And there you have a1 minus b1 squared plus a2 minus b2 squared uh, plus etc. Which can be helpful sometimes. This covers um, addition, subtraction, lengths, etc. as we said. And the next module um, will cover one additional type of operation, one additional form of vector algebra, which is vector multiplication. Thank you very much.